guys, it's Sophie. So today we're doing the five quotes tag. Um, I was kindly tagged by my mentor Maury, so thank you so much Adam, um, much appreciate it. Um, and all this tag is, is just sharing a few of your favourite quotes. Um, so I've actually already done a, a video of my top five quotes. Um, so these aren't my absolute favourites, but they are still near and dear to me. Um, and I've tried to make it a little bit interesting and just tell you a little bit of background to the quotes if there is one. So the first quote I wanted to share with you comes from Caroline Duffy's Rapture. Um, there's a little bit of a story for this one. Um, this is the first poem I was ever given by someone else as a sort of love poem. Um, and the guy, it was when I was 16, so it was like my first love, gave me this collection and said, this poem and this section reminds me of you and I do the same thing. So I'm just going to share that with you. Um, but lots of the poems in here are very sweet, so if you're into that kind of thing, then maybe check it out. And the poem itself is called Tea, and I'm just going to read you the first two stanzas. I like pouring your tea, lifting the heavy pot and tipping it up so the fragrant liquid steams into your tiny cup, or when you're away or at work. I like to think of your cupped hands as you sip, as you sip, of the faint half smile of your lips. The next one is something completely different. Um, I'm afraid it's another McCarthy. I, I'm sorry guys, I'm just a little bit obsessed right now. Um, but this is the Sunset Limited, which obviously I haven't spoken to you guys about yet, because I've only read it this month. Um, it's one of his plays, and it's it's mega interesting as a, as a thing, it's sort of a discussion on, on death and philosophy and religion and all kinds of different things. Um, but there was one quote in here that I saw and just really strongly related to, um, and I, shared, I actually shared it on my Instagram and my Twitter already, so you may have already seen it, but for those of you who don't follow me on those places, I will give it to you here. And that's what sent you off the edge of the platform. It wasn't nothing personal. It is personal. That's what an education does. It makes the world personal. And I just, I completely agree, and I'd never thought of it that way before. Um, and it so perfectly captures, I think, what I try and get from my education, is to bring the world close and, and to see it for what it is and know it. Um, and whilst the, the sort of book itself um, isn't the cheeriest thing in the world, um, I just really identified with that quote and thought a lot of you guys might like it too. The next one is a political one, um, and it's from Jose Saramago's Seeing. Um, and this is one that I read and went to go fetch my pen because I was just sort of... As, as you've seen when I've spoken about him before, um, he writes quite sort of strong, strong political messages. And this is one that I um, sort of have a little bit of a fear about in myself. So I'll read you the quote and hopefully you'll understand. Since the citizens of this country were not in the healthy habit of demanding the proper enforcement of the rights bestowed on them by the Constitution, it was only logical even natural, that they failed to even notice that those rights had been suspended. And that just plays into a really um, deep sort of worry for me about politics and about the way that we address the world is that we we take for granted um, so much of what we do have as our rights um, and it's so easy for those things to slip. So sort of, you know, Snowden would be a brilliant example of that, that we assume that our privacy is safe, that we assume that our data is safe and it's being stored, you know, wonderfully, no one's doing anything with it. And actually what happens when you aren't vigilant about the things that you have that are your rights? Sarah may go scary, isn't it? <laughs> and the next one is um, from Sylvia Plath's Ariel. Um, so brace yourself because it's Plath and she's, you know, she's deep and dark and scary. Um, but it's, a, it's the odd sort of dark humour aspect of it um, that I really enjoy about this particular quote that I'm going to share with you because um, I think she does have a good sense of humour running through the sort of depressive elements um, and that's one of the things I really love about her poetry. So this is the second stanza from a poem called Years. Oh God, I am not like you, in your vacuous black, stars stuck all over, bright, stupid confetti. Eternity bores me. I never wanted it. It's just the sort of pithy, like, taking the piss out of God. I just, I love stuff like that, that sort of um, really odd humour that she has. Um, and there are a lot of lot of her work sort of expresses that, but I think that's a good example for you. And then the last one um, is one that is really special to me. Um, but I didn't share in my last video, I don't think. Um, and that is Do Not Go Gentle Into The Good Night by Dylan Thomas. Um, and hopefully I'm going to put a clip of him doing it in there because it, it should be old enough now that I can do that. Um, so yeah, here's, here's the quote now. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. So the reason why this one is so meaningful um, to me is because you may already know, I, I used to write to a prisoner on death row. And I started doing that when I 
was 17, um, I first started writing to him and um, he was put to death when I was uh, 21. Um, and I wrote to him for pretty much that entire period of time, there were a few on and off periods where I didn't write so much or he didn't write so much, but we pretty much kept in contact the, the whole way through um, that period. And one of the things we used to do a fair amount was he had sort of taught himself to read properly when he was in prison um, and was just kind of enjoying language for the first time um, and was learning to love poetry. And um, he was sort of asking me like what, what poems, you know, what poems do you think I should read, what, what should I do? Um, we'd send a few back and forth and a few suggestions and um, I sent him, I, I wrote out, um, do not go gentle into this good night. Um, and it meant it meant a lot to me that that he read it and that he got what I meant by it. Um, because I think he understood how strongly I felt that what was happening to him was wrong. Um, and that whilst I don't, I would never condone what he did and his crimes, and and they were horrible crimes. Um, and I don't think he should, regardless of my sort of personal interaction with this person, I don't think he should be. He should have been let out or or sort of that sort of things. I think he did need a life sentence. Um, but I don't think it's right that he was killed. And that poem was me sort of saying like, don't just let this happen to you. Um, and so it means a lot to me. <laughs> it means a lot to me because it is it is so meaningful and it's so it's so full of of I think what the poet intended, um, of that sort of futile anger against death. Um, so yeah, sorry to end on a sad note, um, but I think it's important, I think it's good to address sad things too. We can't pretend to always be shiny, happy people all the time. I'm a really bad booktuber, I just completely forgot to tag anyone else. I was just like, no, it stops here, I've done enough. Um, so I'm going to tag um, Jocelyn Scribbles Reads, um, I'm going to tag um, Brittany from Under the Radar Books, which hasn't already been tagged. Um, and I'm going to tag We Need Honey because um, her channel's really new um, and I just want you all to check her out because I think her channel's going to be great. There's only a few things on there that I've managed to catch at the moment um, but developing nicely. Uh, so yeah, go check her out too. All of the links to those channels will be down below for you. So I hope that you've enjoyed listening to these quotes, um, though depressing some of them may be, um, and you've learned, learned a little bit more about me um, if you're even vaguely interested in that. Um, I will see you relatively sh shortly in my next video, which I think is going to be on BPD, um, but I'm really, really nervous about doing it, so just bear with me. If it takes a minute or two, it takes a minute or two, and it may be that I do more bookish ones in the middle as buffers. <laughs> we will see. Alright, I'll see you guys soon regardless. Bye-bye.